Here's the latest update on barrel, which continues to barrel off to the west-northwest right now. A very healthy-looking hurricane here uh, just to the south of the Dominican Republic. Maximum sustained winds now at 155 miles per hour, moving off to the west-northwest at 22. The official track takes it very close, if not right across Jamaica over the next 24 hours. From there, it looks like it continues that west-northwest track making landfall somewhere in the Yucatan Peninsula between Cancun, maybe as far south as Tulum, and potentially down to Belize. So a pretty narrow area, though, now that we're looking at. It looks to be the Yucatan here in New Mexico. That's where landfall looks to be likely. Once it moves ashore, it's going to lose that source of that warm water below it, so we're going to start to see the storm weaken. We're also going to encounter some friction of land, and that will likely reduce the storm down to a tropical storm. Now, Texas... You need to watch this storm because as it moves into the Gulf, it may re-energize. Some of the models say that it will. The good news is, is we've seen a lot of tropical activity here. Temperatures in the ocean are plenty warm enough to support tropical activity, but they're not off the charts in these areas like they have been. So if there is a silver lining, maybe that's it. Model consensus starting to grow that, though, bringing this right across the Yucatan. Again, we do still have a wide variety of solutions once it gets into the Bay of Campeche and the Gulf of Mexico. But the trend has been to bring this thing north right into Texas. So regardless, I think if we're seeing a tropical storm, maybe it strengthens back to a hurricane. Maybe it's a tropical depression. Regardless of how strong this gets, I think we have a heavy rain threat now for Texas and Louisiana and maybe even further inland as we head into next week. A quick look at the animation of this as it moves into the Yucatan. This is uh, one of the models here bringing it right across Cozumel just to the south of Cancun. Again, once it moves across the Yucatan, it encounters all of that land and that friction, so it gets torn apart. But some of the models bring it back to life again once it moves back out into the Gulf, and then it starts to make that curve to the north. Now, this is just one model. Houston up in this area, yeah, getting kind of something to be of concern. And again, this is just one run of all of the models so again take that with a grain of salt but if you are anywhere from really here in the parts of mexico up along the coast of texas and as far east i think as alabama you want to pay attention to this storm over the next 24 hours as it continues to move off to the west northwest here's what's going to pull it north i think really this hasn't changed and if anything i think this looks even stronger it's this trough here that's moving across the central part of the united states that's basically going to take barrel and pick it up the problem would be if we don't see it get picked up, right? If this trough moves away too quickly and it doesn't pick up barrel like that, let's just say it kicks out. Are we looking at a rainmaker across Texas that lingers for days and days and days? That could be a problem. So that's something to watch. If you like this kind of content, I hope you'll subscribe. This is the kind of stuff I cover. And uh, thanks for all of you who have done so. Severe weather, we're dealing with it as we move into your Wednesday. Once again, now from Ohio all the way back into Missouri and another severe weather day across the plains east of the mountains here. There could even be a few strong storms with some tornadoes on the table. Big storms going all the way through early Wednesday morning. These storms pushing east. Once we move into the day Wednesday, we start to see the storms fire up back in this area again across Nebraska, Kansas, even into parts of South Dakota. Some of those, again, could drop a few tornadoes and have some strong damaging winds. And all of that now pushing to the east as we move into early Thursday morning toward St. Louis, toward Chicago with some rain showers. And then as we head into Friday, again, everything pushing closer to the Great Lakes. Here's a look at the east. We've got a few showers here across Florida. The bulk of the rain, though, still well to the west. As we move into Wednesday afternoon, though, strong to severe thunderstorms start to fire up here into Ohio, back into southern parts of Indiana and southern parts of Illinois. Then that moves into parts of Kentucky late in the night. How strong do they stay? I don't know, but that's something that needs to be watched here do we get some much-needed rain in these areas? I think it's still a little too early to say because, look, I'm going to let this roll out all the way through Friday. These storms, they look scattered. So we need a soaking rain in some of these areas, and unfortunately, it doesn't look like that's on the table, especially across the Carolinas where it is extremely dry, also into parts of Tennessee and Kentucky. There's your storms across the plains kicking up east of the mountains tomorrow. There could also be a, a few showers with the monsoon going here across parts of New Mexico. And then another hot day, too. Let's take a look at the rain. That's what most of you are concerned about, especially as we see some really dry conditions persist. There comes barrel here across the Gulf of Mexico. There's those showers we've been looking at around the Great Lakes by the end of the week. 
Maybe by Saturday we get some rain showers here into the Carolinas. And then, again, the question is what happens with barrel? What happens with the moisture? Does it get picked up by that trough? Unfortunately, the worst-case scenario, I think, for inland rain would be if that trough kicks out and we get the rain that just persists. It's something I'll be watching. Hope you'll come back. I'll catch you next time.